Hello and welcome to Tip for Tat. We're going to go over some of the equipment that you need to do tatting. We're going to go over some shuttles right here. This is a metal shuttle. It's by Boy. It has a bobbin, which is removable. And you can wind that on your sewing machine if you have a sewing machine that fits this type of bobbin. If you need to wind it by hand, I suggest not going with this type of shuttle. These are really thin and really wide bobbins. So one thing I liked about this is the weight. It feels a bit more solid to me. Uh, the point on the end has a little hook which allowed me to use, uh, use it for joins and picots and things like that and pulling stitches. One of its detractors, however, is that it is made of metal. And so this clip at the very beginning holding the two sides together will catch on your threads if you're not careful and fray them or cut them. So we put that one aside for now. This one's a clover one. They come in any number of colors. Uh, pretty much all of them ew, not so great looking, I gotta say. They're post shuttles, which means that you have to wrap your thread around them. They also make this clicking noise, uh, which some people find soothing, but my husband is a light sleeper, so when I was tatting in bed, he would wake up and wonder what the heck I was doing. It does come with a pick on, on the end. Uh, it does not come with a hook, just the pick. And it's kind of sharp, so you will be able to pull your stitches apart if you've made a mistake. However, like I said, I'm not going with uh, shuttle tatting right now, so we're going to set that one aside. In our bin of goodies, we have needles, which I have gotten from Hobby Lobby. They are made by Handy Hands. As you can tell, I've got four of them here. They are part of a kit, which comes also with one of these lovely needle threaders, which we'll get to later. These currently come four to a pack. I know that they usually sell these three to a pack. So when you're looking for tatting needles, what you're basically looking for is this number five. If you can tell, it's pretty big. It's got a nice size eye on it. The number three that you'll also get sometimes if you're going to get these kits, it's a bit bigger than you would normally use for this particular type of project if you're looking at tatting to make jewelry or doilies and things like that. You would need a much larger size thread for this to work well. Uh, this comes with a number seven and a number eight. The extra fine is your bonus. This one I would probably use if I was doing needle tatting uh, with thread, like actual sewing thread. Again, the seven, pretty small maybe uh, size up on the sewing thread, like a heavy duty kind of thing. These needles are pretty thin, so you want to be careful with them, especially with the smaller ones. The, the number fives I've heard of people using, you know, shoving them against inanimate objects to slip the stitches off, so that's what you've got there. Next, you've got your Easy bobs. These are handy for me because if I'd wanted to carry this around in my little glass case here, I don't really want to carry that around. I'm going to say that that's probably going to be very easy to lose, very easy to drop, very easy to, well, use as an object of mass destruction against somebody who's gotten in your way. Whatever. <clears throat> this is much easier for me to use. Uh, it's small, it's portable, uh, and you will get 10 to a pack. These are the smalls. They're called Easy Bobs. You may find them at your sewing machine stores, yarn stores. You can also find them on Amazon. So if you have the opportunity to find these, get them. The main reason why is because of this. They will protect your thread from, actually I believe that they're touted as UV protective as well, but if you have a tendency to drop your thread like I do, it's not going to get dirty when it's closed. All you're going to have to worry about is what you've got in your hand. So 
if you'll notice I have two different ones here what we'll go on to is thread here because this is a number 10 thread again with thread sizes the larger the number the smaller the the actual thread size so if you'll notice it's pretty easy to throw to pull these apart this is a number 10 it's called crochet thread it's this huge big ball of stuff it's relatively cheap you can find it at a local craft store Joann's whatever this one is a little bit finer and it is a little bit more expensive as such and what you're going to look for in this is consistency as far as the thread color is concerned this one is much easier for you to pull stitches from <clears throat> excuse me and to use uh, it has a nice feel to it it doesn't fray as easily and in general it's a joy to work with again it is a little bit more expensive but I like it so then we've got our needle threader this one came with my kit this one was from the handy hands kit which I got my needles from if you'll notice it's pretty big uh, which means it's easier to grasp and it's also got a much longer wire eye which means that if you were to load beads onto it you could get a good five or six beads on here as opposed to one of your local sewing kit finds uh, I'm sure you've all seen these ubiquitous items but you can only get maybe one or two beads onto one of these and they're relatively flimsy feeling so I like this one it's like one of my major finds that I didn't realize that would be helpful so You'll also need a pair of scissors. I prefer these gingers. They will be a good investment for you if you keep them sharp. And one thing that I am vouching for these for is because when you're making a cut, you want to have the closest, cleanest cut. And I sound like I'm talking about a shaving cream commercial or something like that now. But you don't want your ends to fray. That's the one thing that you don't want. So if you have a pair of scissors that are good and cut sharp, you don't have to get gingers, but you do want something that's going to give you a nice crisp edge. Another item that I picked up is a small crochet hook. This is a size 7. I thought it was touted as 14, but maybe that's my problem. So it's got a small little, I don't know if you can see that, small little hook at the end as usual for a crochet hook it's got the flat edge you want probably I've never seen one of these in plastic so these are the metal ones again this is by boy and you probably want a larger hook a slightly larger hook depending on what size thread that you're working with I found that this one will pull singular threads instead of the whole entire piece through if I'm not careful so you definitely want something that will make it easier for you. Another item that I've picked up along my way is a gauge. This you'll find at your sewing supply area, possibly. I found this one in the bead area of my local Joann's. One thing I've found that this is indispensable for is because if I'm playing around with a new pattern, or a new type of thread or a new size needle and I'm not inherently familiar with how many stitches make up how many inches or millimeters or what have you I can figure that out relatively quickly it's small and it fits in my eyeglass case so I figured it was a good thing to have in there it makes my life a little bit easier another item that I like to carry around is these safety pins you want small ones. Uh, you don't want to be carrying around a big, huge safety pin because if you're like me, you'll stab yourself with it nine times out of ten. So what I use these for is if I am trying to make a little motif or trying to join one of these items to another and I can't get my needle all the way around, I will hold with my safety pin down here where I started my ring while I make this stitch 
So then that way I can get my needle all the way around in that tight space. I can actually pull my thread through and then push it back through that way. So it's a handy thing to have. You don't have to have it if you're competent enough like I'm not. So it's just one of those things that I found that it's handy to, to, to keep in your little kit. This, despite what it says, is a name brand. I didn't pay hardly anything for it. You can find these at thrift stores. They're practically giving them away at, ga at eyeglass stores if you buy a pair of glasses. I prefer the hard shell kind, mostly because of the fact that I have a propensity to stab myself with sharp implements and others, but we won't talk about that. So once you've got all your kit together, just basically make sure to keep all your items in there. When you're looking for them, you'll be in one spot because there's nothing more painful than trying to find a needle in a haystack, so to speak. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you around over at tipfortap.com.